the bottle of champagne. What is it? It, it is. It, it's a celebration of the third year. I love it. I love it. It's champagne. It's actually just it's a water bottle. It's tea. Cold brew tea. Cold brew tea. Yeah. So good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming in, whoever's out there on Zoom right now. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, open house, and we've done a bunch of classes on how to do an open house, how to prepare for it, and so forth. But today we have our very own Jeff Dreyer that's been successful with uh, holding open houses and converting potential buyer leads from open houses to success to closings. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what he does and and what he asks them and how he follows up and so forth. So, okay. Jeff? No, to tell you the truth, I'm not really a real estate agent. I just play one on television. <laughs> so they just hired me to come and do this. So. <laughs> no, well, no, I'm just kidding. All right, so let me tell you a quick background about me. Uh, I, yeah, my name is John Trier, and um, I have been with, uh, having a real estate license since 2007. And, but what I did is my first love in life was I wanted to be a veterinarian. So I went to Cal Poly Pomona, got a bachelor's degree in veterinary science. I worked at the local racetrack with horses. Los Alamitos, and I wanted to be an equine veterinarian on a racetrack. And then I took a, I went through an ugly divorce, took a summer off in the automobile business. 30 years later, after being a salesman, finance manager, sales manager, general sales manager for 10 years at big dealership, uh, I got bored. And uh, I was, was about back Honda Santa Ana or Freeway Honda. I was sales manager there for three years. I said, I'm going to get my real estate license. And then uh, and I sold everything from Nissan to Porsche and Maserati. And so um, what I did is I got my real estate license and decided I wanted to go into real estate. You know, we had mortgage meltdown, you know, car business, everything it was terrible. So uh, it was like, but going into real estate was like out of hand into fire. I don't know why I was going to do that, but it was something I had a new challenge because I've always worked on commission. So I checked around with some brokers and talked to some people and went in and interviewed and had a few people wanting to hire me. And then I talked with Richard and I came in, I like Richard. And one thing you guys get here, you guys got great education. Okay, you really do. So when you start out, um, first thing they tell you, like most things when you sell, whether it's insurance or whatever, is that is that use your sphere of influence, right? I mean, how many people do you know? And how many people can be loyal to you? You know, I'm I, honestly, we've had I've had some really good friends, people I've known for a long time. And they ended up going with somebody else on it, and they knew I was a real estate, you know. And it's kind of, you know, and you go, how, how could you even do that? You go, oh yeah, if I ever sell or ever buy, I'm going to use you. And then you go with somebody else. Well, yeah, somebody told me about so you know, so you never know, okay. So you have to manufacture things for yourself, okay. So what I did is we started training. I think it was in 2014, and the end, middle end of 2014, and then I got lucky. Somebody that I knew. Wanted my house, and that's why I sold the first property. Now I live up in Tribuco Canyon. If anybody knows where that is, at Cook's Corner. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you have to drive their Harleys on the weekends. Yeah. Okay, and uh, in Fort Cold Hills, but I sold the property in Huntington Beach. And then, but then, I'm done. I don't know anybody else. I can't wait around for people that want to move, want to buy something. You know, you got to do something yourself. So I said, you know, so I heard, well, there's open houses available, and certain agents would do. It you know, that needed help. They had one, two, maybe three. And I know there was one guy that worked here. I used to tell people all the time, they say, well, why are you doing it? And just got his name out there on the sign. I said, well, he's a super agent, but he can't do more than one open house at a time. So I'm covered for him. So, um, and some of them just don't have time to do their open house. So the very first property I do, and everything's perception on, on, what, on what you're thinking. Uh, and just shows the difference on how people think. Uh, pardon me. Um, I did an open house, and it was for Julia Bechner. Right? That's Julia at some point, right? And uh, she's Ukrainian or Hungarian and stuff like that, right? Russian. Russian, okay. And so she did a property. And remember where the uh, hangar was? Tustin? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was right across the street. It was a condo. It was a nice condo. It was okay. It was nothing special. I didn't know any better. You know? And right across the street was the hangar. Well, the week before, there was another agent in the office that had done an open house there. And I was told, oh, the <laughs> property ever, you look across the street, you see this big, ugly building, you know, a hangar, and it's, you know, and, and nobody's going to buy this property. So when I did the property, I thought it was extremely cool because I could just imagine in the evening watching 
the blimp come down, you know, as the sun was setting and going inside this hangar. And then the same thing in the morning when the sun was going up, it was iconic. And I was, and I was, and, and that fascinated me. And so the people that came through, that's kind of how I start a conversation with them. You know, hi, I'm Jeff. And then, you know, first thing I ask them, what do you think about the building across the street? Because if they said it's ugly, they're not buying this property, right? So they said, they said, I don't know, what do you think? I said, I think it's iconic. It is the coolest thing. And then I thought, you know, that's really, that's interesting. Yeah, that would be cool to see that. Anyways, I didn't sell that property, okay? But I only did the open house one time. But I did meet a couple in that property, and I ended up selling their property in Orange. Yeah, I was their buyer's agent, I represented them. First open house they did, I met somebody. Now, I was told by so many agents, nobody wants to do open houses. Like, I'm sorry, Jonathan, right? Okay, why would I do an open house for you? You're the listing agent, people are gonna come through, they either have an agent, or they're just looking, or they are gonna call you directly because your name's out there. Why would they use me? You're not paying me a hundred bucks an hour to babysit your property from one to four. They're, you're not paying me per uh, person. And so what do I get out of it? That's what most agents think. For me, I like to talk if you can't tell. It was an opportunity to be able to speak to people. And it's a numbers game. And the more people you talk to, and you, if you want to take notes, the best thing you can do is there's two things I can say. It's the same thing in the automobile business. And it's the same thing in, and the car business was good to me, financially. And if, but in any business, people buy from people they like. Okay? And knowledge is power. The more you know, the stronger you are. All right. So what I did is in Julia's property, now, I had to learn all this stuff by myself. I developed this all by myself. No, there was nobody here to teach me how to do it. Uh, the open houses were just basics on what you do. So you guys are going to get like a plethora here of knowledge, okay? And I just want you to know I take Venmo and I take Zelle. So when you guys <laughs> send me some dough. <laughs> Anyways, the one thing that Julia did have, and, and I liked and it helped me, because I didn't know the area very well, as she had an easel. And she had pictures of what was going to be there once the, uh, once the um, handle was gone. And we're going to develop into a, a, a into a uh, uh, aeronautical museum, and it was going to be all this big park, the grounds, and well, that was nine years ago. You know, it's never developed; it never came to fruition. But it was really cool, and I'm saying that's great information for me to know to talk to people about because I can't guarantee you any other agent that was even doing open house probably never even read the boards that she had out there, and she did it for the people, and nobody was looking at the boards. I would take them and say, come on over, what's your name? Okay, MJ. Okay. MJ. MJ, okay. You know, come over here and look at this and then I'd go over it with them. And I, yeah, I mean, can you just imagine if this was your property, how you're gonna grow with it? And so I decided I'm gonna start doing open houses. Now I spent all my weekends, there's a lot of things I can do on the weekend, you know. I mean I can a lot of things. I have two Australian shepherds take them out for eight mile walks two, three times a week up in the foothills, you know, eight miles, you know, two dogs, three hours, you know, going up the hills, going across, you know, creek beds and stuff, and uh, uh, be in the gym, whatever. Um, but the, I wanted to have that opportunity. So there was a guy who was in this office who's no longer here. And, uh, but we became good friends and he was a phenom in the business. And he was, and he would have multiple open houses. Well, he said, I'll put, I, I'll put signs out for you. I said, I'm not putting 30 signs out for you and then I'm gonna pick up 30 signs afterwards. He said, no, no, I'll put all the signs around. He said, I'll have a couple signs there for you. You put them out in front of the, the property and on the, on the corner. I said, fair enough. And so what I did is I said, I'm gonna learn everything I can about these properties because I'm gonna know more than Michael knows about his own property and maybe somebody will buy it from me instead of from him or use their own agent. I never badmouthed another agent, but I did tell them how much better I was than their agent. Because first of all, if your agent is so great, first thing I ask people when they walk in, I, uh, again, what's your name? Sam. I'm sorry, Sam. Sam, Sam uh, what brings you in today? How did you find the property? Did, I don't wait for you to ask. 
I said, did your agent send you? Did you see it on a real estate uh, website like realtor.com or Zillow? Or did you uh, just drive by? Then I know if they got an agent. Mm -hmm. And then they say, well, my agent sent me. How come your agent's not with you today? And I said, okay, well, they're busy or, you know, they got, you know, whatever. And I, yeah, okay, that's cool. Come on in, look around. But let's start at the beginning on, because one of the things that Carlos put on there is preparing for an open house. Okay? So I have, uh, I apologize. I had volumes to, I have uh, volumes of notepads that I had in, of course, I tossed them. Now, I haven't sold any properties since before COVID. Uh, I got a severely disabled special needs daughter. And she's medically fragile. And if she caught COVID, she would have never survived it. So I was super cautious. Okay. But, you know, I caught COVID. She didn't catch it. She's doing, she's rocking. Yeah. Obviously, it's Jackie's world. That's her name. And we're just living in it. So it's, she's a great kid. Okay. So, but I tossed most of them. But I, fortunately, I did save some. So, uh, and what is your name? Sonia. Sonia, please. So this is where I would start. All right. Uh, let's say you're going to do an open house for Carlos this weekend, <clears throat> and he gave you the address. What do you guys do? Go there and wait for people to come in. Look at the neighborhood. <laughs> well, it, it, you know it's good to you know that's Sonia. That's part of it. I'm going to tell you, and that's pretty spot on. Okay. Um, one thing I used to do when things were normal in the real estate world is every Wednesday. They, you know, how you have the caravans for their agents and stuff. I never did any of that stuff. It didn't, it doesn't do anything for me. Um, but I went out and I previewed properties. And I, so I contact agents a couple of days before and say, hi, you know, I didn't have the buyers. I'd say, hi, uh, MJ, my name is Jeff Dreyer. I'm with Caldwell Banker Platinum Properties uh, in Irvine and uh, in West Park. And here's my uh, license number. And I said, I have clients that may be interested in your property. They're looking at that price point. I'd love to come out and see your property. And the way that I found that property is I got on the MLS. You don't have to get out and drive around. You get on the computer and you do research, okay? And everything is there and it's at your fingertips. So what I did is if I was going to do somebody's property, like say this micro property, uh, first thing I did is, uh, I know we don't have anything up there, so... I just show you here's oh keep that all right so I put uh, on 8 7 2018 I showed five properties um now you guys might think this is interesting because John Fazola thought it was ironic when when I first started because my first year in the car business excuse me uh, you should take the guy out of the car business for you know that I got out in uh, in 2008 2007 um um but you can't take the car business out of the guy I guess out of but my first year, I think in 2015 was my first full year real estate. I think I sold like seven properties and they were all came out of open houses. Yeah, all came out of open houses. <laughs> the couple I got to double end because I got to sell their property. And then I think in 2000 and, and then uh, 2017, 2016, I had medical issues. So that kind of blew out in 2017. I think I sold another seven or eight properties all out of open houses. All right. So it just goes to show you. The same thing in 2019 and then in 2020. And so, but what I did, uh, like I said about John, as you look at me, I mean, let's face it, I'm a white guy, you know? I mean, I could be as cool as you know, I think I am, but I'm a white guy. You're cool, Jeff. Thank you, Carlos, I appreciate that. But you know what? I gotta say 70, maybe almost 80% of my clients, it's not just because I'm an Irvine. But are, are Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Vietnamese, or Indian? Because you know why? Because they respect people that will that are knowledgeable, that will cover their back and treat them like their family and protect their interests and negotiate. Never be afraid to negotiate. Never be able to be afraid to pick up the phone and call an agent. And say, hey, you know, I got this, I got this client and you know, this is more than they will want to, but they really love the property. You know, would your sellers, listen, I can't tell you what a buyer can buy, will pay for a home, and you can't tell me what your sellers will pay for a home, that's illegal. 
But if it was hypothetically, if it was in this ballpark, do you think they would entertain an offer? But they say, absolutely not. So appreciate it. Good talking to you. So, and I move on. Why take my buyers out there and, and blow their mind and take the window out of their sales, make an offer? I'm not, I never send out 15 offers or 10 offers or five offers. When we landed on a property. I sent an offer. I knew I had a deal that was going to close. Okay. So what I did, you ready? You sure you can read that? You have a very small hand. <laughs> I need a magnifying glass or a telescope. Okay. All right. So, all right, so let's go. So what I would do, guys, is the first thing I do is I wrote down the address. Okay, you put down the date because you want to do that because you want to keep your log for tax purposes because you can take your mileage and, uh, uh, you know, from your place to properties, et cetera. And, uh, and you want to keep a log of what you've done and if you showed it to them. And if you had a buyer's representation agreement and they bought it from somebody else and it was exclusive, well, then, you know, somebody poached your client and, you know, and Richard will go to bat for you. But for me, it's all about keeping things in front of me. So what I would do is the first thing I did is I wrote down the address, okay? I put down the address, uh, the, the street, and the zip code. And then next to that, I put down what the price was. That means that they dropped the price and what the price is now. Then I put next to that how many square feet the property is. You guys got this? Mm -hmm. Okay. You can sell it for a while? No, I'm very new. Okay, and you? So uh, early you. Okay. Are you all of you pretty new? Okay. Um the square footage of the property. Then I put the square footage of the lot. Then I put how many, and then I put the price per square foot of property. The people say, why would you put this the price per square foot? That means nothing. And the guy that used to be the sales manager that does, you know, remember the Jurassic Park era? Did you guys know Ted? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, he was great. And he, was, he was our HR director too, right? <laughs> okay. So, hey, Ted, you're out there? Anyways, so uh, he was cool. Very cool. And very knowledgeable. But people say price per square foot means nothing. To me, price per square foot means everything. Because the things that factor in the price per square foot, if you got a 2,000 square foot home here that's got no upgrades and everything in it is old and needs to be redone, versus the property over here that's the same price and just about the same square footage or even a little bit more square per price per square foot, but it's been upgraded. It's got quartz side, quartz, uh, quartz counters, quartz side counters. It's got wood floors. It's got you know, whatever they've done. They've done upgrades and modernized their home. You can't tell me that this property is worth as much as this property per square foot. It just can't. It's just that's not possible. But somebody's gonna walk in. Yeah, yeah, this is nice. You're walking and say, "Oh my gosh!" And I'm gonna point out everything because Sonia, I already went and previewed this home, and I already know to show them this home. And I'm gonna get to that in a second. So I put down the price per square foot, and then I put. How many bedrooms? So six bedrooms, three bathrooms, maybe it's three and a half, maybe it's 2.75. Uh, when it was built. Now this seems like overkill, but these are all the things that you can tell your clients that you're showing properties to and people in open houses, if you want to. We're going to get to that too. Uh, it was built in, uh, built, say, 1987. How much the HOA is? The amenities, we got a really cool pool, they got a volleyball court, you know, pickleball, whatever they didn't have pickleball back then. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, and then I would put uh, how many days it's been on the market <clears throat> over in the corner here. So, like an MLS printout of the listing, is it that kind of information? Kind of, yes, without printing it out. I didn't have to because I had everything mm -hmm. up on this list. And then they might say, Oh, can I get a copy of that on an MLS? Out. But this, but it goes even a little bit further. And then what I would do is I would put on this particular property, I knew that uh, they had a brand new counters, remodeled kitchen. They had the ugliest on this first one, uh, countertops. But hey, everybody's got their own taste. And uh, but I showed them brand new countertops. Uh, 
It's got wood flooring, not vinyl flooring, not laminate flooring. This is wood flooring. What kind of wood flooring is it? This is it walnut? You know, I, I'd find that out. It's got a lot. You know, they start getting excited about stuff. And if you walk them around the property, go, oh, well, because they would have never realized this because they're walking into a home, they're looking around. It's just a home. They don't get all these fine points unless you point them out. That's why when you do the open house, you need to go about it. So when you get to that open house that you're going to do for Carlos, get there 20 minutes early. Not just so you can put up the signs, but you can walk through the house because you've already seen everything on the MLS on that listing. But now you can go and you can touch it. You watch it and say, oh, beautiful countertops. You know, and this is this is a highlight to show you. All right. And then back in those days, now maybe this is not a good thing to say. This is the way I feel about it. This is the truth. I was told when I when I when I trained, never give up a dollar. Never give up any of your money, okay? And I got to tell you, that has probably cost me well over $100,000 in the pocket commissions. Because I had people, because you have Redfin, how easy it, Redfin gives you commission, and it's real easy if you do all the research, okay? You go to, you go to Redfin, you see how much commission they're getting. How do you know how much commission they're getting? Well, just take the commission and divide it by the selling price that they're asking, and that will tell you what the percentage is, point, point, 0 0.0028, whatever it is, and you can figure, and then you can figure it on this. So I'd write that in the corner on the days on the market. So I knew in case I had to give it up. And there were people who asked me for money, and I'd say, back for closing. I mean, I can't tell you how many $20,000 commissions I missed out because I didn't give up $3,500 or $4,000 back to them to closing costs. I look back and go, oh, top of my head blew up. Why did I do that? I could have given them up. I think it's worth it. And it's easy to get off, well, Redfin does it. Okay, but let me tell you what Redfin does. Okay, and I'm not knocking them. This is fact. They have some guy or girl who's not very knowledgeable about properties. They come out and they pay, I think back then it was 60 bucks to pop the box so you could go in and take a look at the property. <clears throat> they don't know much about the property. You look around, if you decide you want to buy it, then they get a seasoned agent who come in and write that property up for you and make the offer. How's that seasoned agent going to know anything about the property? They haven't walked the property, and, and they don't know everything about that property like you do because you've just done an open house of it. You know that property. You've looked at the MLS. You've walked through it. Now, I do all the things that they do, even when it comes to – how about special assessments? You guys know what special assessments are? No. Okay. Mel Roos. You familiar with Mel Roos? Oh, yeah. What do you call special assessments? How do you find out the special assessments are? You go to Realist. They'll show you what the assessments are. And then you say, okay, so let's say, uh, I can't remember, let's say an R8. And then they got an R8 and they got an, uh, an A21, two of them. And it will show you the two assessments. And then you say, well, what? But one, one ends in seven years and the other one ends in 30 years in a newer property. Then they say, oh, well, my agent said this one ends in seven years. Really? Does your agent? Your agent's wrong. Well, what makes you what makes you right, Jeff? And my agent wrong. Because I picked up the phone and I called the county tax assessor's office. And I got their number, name and number of my phone, my contact, and made friends with them on the phone and asked them questions. And you can go on their website and you can see when they end. And they said, and then you can see when it ends, but then the one that ends the soonest, it rolls over and connects to the second one that's gonna end in 25 years or 20 years. How do I know that again? Because I talked to the special assessor and they confirmed it. Oh, wow, my agent never told me that. I said, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You know what? I'm not trying to talk to you, not your agent, but my God, from Redfin, I'll do all the same things they will. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Sam. Everything that we're talking about, if I did everything that a Redfin was good and give you money back like Redfin and Nashville, would you be interested in me representing you? Why wouldn't they say, yeah, of course. Now, they don't always. I've had people, the last property I sold, um, <clears throat> I can't remember her name. She's in the office. It's Persian. Um, Janelle. Janelle, yeah. Over in, uh, in Great Park. I sold a property of hers, Russ and Byers in. Almost three years later, almost three years later, they contacted me. Jeff, you sell some real estate? And I said, yeah, this is, this is, you remember, my name is Omar. I don't know if you remember me. 
And uh, I said, oh yeah, he remembered his wife's name. And because I took notes, now I followed up on him and he never replied. Yeah, yeah, we're getting close. We'll think about it, keep in mind. Then he goes to me, okay? And then I don't know where he contacts me. We became great friends, negotiated a great deal on the property. They love it. As a matter of fact, I just took all my buyers and uh, that I sold properties to uh, last week and went on the MLS and I did comparables on all of them. And we're running over our time. No, no, no. I've got one of these watches, which buzzes when I get out of the notification. So I'll look at it. Okay. I, I, I'll follow it. All right, all right. And if I'm taking too long, you let me know, okay? And um, they, uh, and I did, did all the comparables. And then I sent them all out texts and tell them what their property would bring right now, just in case I'm mistaken about selling. Yeah. Maybe I'll stimulate some business out of it. But, uh, and almost every one of them re replied. You know, ah, oh, thank you for great news. Yeah, we love her, you know, too bad you found her such a great home. <laughs> and, 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 yeah. and, uh, and you gotta remember, you gotta for me. Everything's negotiable. So you can, I even write down how much the special assessments are and what they cover. So you have a metal roost, the metal roost is for this, and it was, and it was put in, you know, when, when the properties were built. Well, what exactly is a metal roost? Well, metal roost is when the developer develops property they can either absorb the property taxes themselves, okay? But why would they do that? Because it comes out of the profit. So what they do is they pass it on to the home buyers and they divvy it up on the lots. And you pay it until it's like a bond, until it's mature. And wow, I never knew that. That's what I do for you. Okay, so that's how you prepare ID for an open house. All those things, the more information you have, because knowledge is power, the more knowledge you have, people are just... You know, even if they don't use you, you're going to go, I've never had an agent that knows as much as you do, Sonia. I really appreciate it. And then because you did previews on properties, and it'll come back. I really believe the market's going to come back. If, if the bonds, and the way the market's, you know, rates come down, there'll be more inventory, and we'll navigate around this, you know, this new law. And, and uh, you'll be able to go out and preview homes, and then you'll be more knowledgeable than anybody else. How does it take you to put a list of five homes, all the information that you have here, you spend an hour on the MLS, and then you go out and you drive around the neighborhood and look at you know, the part, properties kind of in that price point, give or take a hundred, couple hundred thousand. Because I've had no problems having communication with, with, with some people, with agents. I sold some people property. Back then it was a lot of money. It was 1.6. And, and, uh, I showed them properties. Are you familiar with uh, uh, Orange? Okay, so you know where uh, Crawford Canyon, Pan Panorama Heights is, that area over there? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, if you went through Santiago Canyon or you came up Chapman or if you came up Orange, Sam, you'll see they look like the Hollywood Hills up there. Mm -hmm. You know, the homes, gorgeous homes. And the home was uh, so, went back and forth and back and forth with this agent. And uh, finally, I got her to get her sellers to commit because it was vacant. And had been on the market for long enough and to uh, give us $100,000 off on the home. People said, you can't do that. Yeah, you can. All you need to do is not be afraid to pick up a phone and talk to somebody. And anyways, we ended up buying property in Huntington Beach. How's that? Because when they had big fires, um, they freaked out. They said, no, we're not living out here. And so to bought one of those tall and skinny. It looks like a castle. Mm -hmm. Seriously, it's gorgeous block on the beach. And it was like 1.8. Anyways, um, there is so much preparation that goes into doing an open house, and there's possibilities out there to get clients out of. And you know what? You're going to walk out, and I'm, I want to phone some days, and I'm, I'm just exhausted. I mean, I felt like I was, you know, the information center. I mean, I remember doing one property over in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Woodbury. And it was a little condo, and luck had a hundred people come through that. You would have thought I was giving out hundred dollar bills. That's how many people were coming through that park. And everybody's, I had four or five people around me asking conversation, you know, making conversation. And out of a property that's over in uh, Stonegate, but Stonegate West on the other side, you know what that is? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have Stonegate, you know where Stonegate is, and then the other side of uh, Sand Canyon. All right, Stonegate East, excuse me, I said West. Um, I did property over there a couple of times, like three weekends in a row. I met a woman who was even older than me. 
and uh, and uh, a Korean woman. And we went, and and she liked me a lot. But I was talking to some other people. She came up and started listening, and she started asking me questions. Those people left, and then she started, you know. And then we went around, and around, and ended up finding property for her and her husband. And and honestly, that would be a lot easier if we could done things electronically through zip forms. I had to go meet him at Panera over at uh, Woodbury Town Center to get all the paperwork signed. And then something missed, and I had to go back and forth, you know. And I don't live that close to. Her. Anyways, so all the information that you have is right at your fingertips. And if you know it, you're going to feel comfortable. And you walk through that property, and you're going to know the property better <clears throat> than Carlos knows it and his whole his own listing. He might know it that well, but he got a listing, but you've done such a deep dive on it that everybody would be amazed. Now, with all that, as I said, there's a huge caveat there, okay? Huge caveat. I've had complaints, okay, against me, and, and luckily the guy I worked with, Michael, uh, he didn't care. You know, one thing I used to tell my salesman when they were, uh, when I was in car business, is if I catch you lying to a customer, or you come in drunk, I smell alcohol on your breath, you're fired. Okay? I don't put up with that. So there's no need to lie to people. But somebody would come in, and I had, you know, it only happened a couple times. And one guy got really mad at me. And he came in, and he starts asking me all this information. I said, well, you told me you have an agent. And he said, yeah, but uh, my agent's not here. I said, then call your agent. Your agent will give you all that information. And he said, well, that's your job. I said, no. I'm sorry, you're mistaken. My job, he said, what's your job? My job is to make it convenient to open this property so you can come in on Saturday or Sunday and take a look at it without your agent. Well, I'm not here today. You need your agent to get in this property. You can't get in here by yourself. It's not my job to give you all the information and then take it back to your salesman. Because you know what? You're going to even ask me, well, I'm going to tell you guys a quick story after this. And then, so what he did is he called the agent because Michael Sines were out there. It was his phone number and complained. Michael said, I tell you the same thing. You know, I get beat it. You know, I don't have to give you that information. You know, and, and it's not like he lost anything about it. I had a girl come into a property over in uh, Stonegate, and she was uh, a Chinese, and, and her and she came in and she was with her father, and her father only spoke Mandarin. If I could speak Mandarin, I'd kill it. I'd be the top agent of her. Okay, and and uh, we got along really, really great. But her dad wanted uh, a lender. She said, do you know a lender that speaks Mandarin? I said, I do. And she said, uh, can you introduce us? And what I should have done, because we got along good, and I said, uh, I said, yeah, give her the information. I should have got a, I should, what, what I did, I said, I should get a business agreement with you. It's called a large representation agreement exclusive. So you're my client, so I can't get, so you don't get the loan approved and then go with somebody else. Oh, I would never do that to you. You know, I'm not that kind of person. Sure enough, she did. She even asked me what I thought they could buy a property for. And I said, if I had to make a guess and I had to make an offer because of this, 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 and this, I can see on the property. Uh, I said, I would, I, this is the ballpark that I would make the offer. Not only did she go with one of her cousin's friends after I got her approved with, 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 uh, with a manner speaking uh, um, lender, but she made the offer to the agent at the exact same price that I told her I thought she could buy the property for. I didn't tell her she could, that I thought she could buy the property for. And then she calls me, you want to talk about the audacity, she calls me. And says, you know what? You're a liar. I said, what? Well, you said I could buy this property, and they turned me down. I said, well, that's your agent's fault. I said, because it's all in the presentation. I said, if you make an offer, you've got to be able to justify why you're making that offer. And your agent, I'm sure, didn't do that. And she said, yeah, well, you didn't tell me that. I said, I told you enough, and you ended up not going out, and you went around me, and you went with somebody else, and we've got nothing else to talk about. Sorry. And then I hung up the phone. You know what? She had the nerve to get mad at me that that I didn't do everything for her and she could give the commission to somebody else. <laughs> All right. So you learn, you know, you, you learn, and, and I got to be honest, I, I've lost, you know, buyers that I had for one reason or another, you know, um, but it's, again, it's a numbers game. I mean, if you can sell five or six properties that you wouldn't have sold out of open houses, oh my gosh, especially with everything being $800,000, $900,000 a square foot right now, you know, you got some nice commissions, especially if you know, you're strong enough with the new law and you negotiate 
you know, your commission. Um, so that brings me again to, you don't have to, everybody that comes in this open house, give them all that whole gamut of information. Because if you do that, you're wasting your time, you're loading them up, and you're going to get nothing out of it. So I give maybe a little piece of something. And then I walk, walk around, and I said, pardon me, and I'd walk around, and, uh, and you know, at first I let them walk around the property. I'd walk around and show them things, have conversations were going along. Uh, you already, how soon before you thinking about buying a home? Or, I mean, are you very soon? Are you like in the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months, next year? Yeah, it's probably going to be next year. Okay, go ahead, look around, make yourself at home. You know, then I'll talk to somebody else. I'm still friendly to them. You know, I don't say go and get out. You know, I let them look around. And then I, you know, and then when you find somebody that says very soon, and then you can feel that they're starting to warm up to you. And then, you know, I, you get to the point where you need to ask and I didn't always do it. A lot of times I didn't need it. But towards the end, I wouldn't do it again if I had a client, even if the law wasn't changing. I would ask for, I said, I would tell them, you know, every business has a business agreement, correct? And people do businesses, yes. So we have what's called a buyer's representation agreement. If you want me to give you all of my knowledge and all my negotiating power and me protect your interests, yeah. like through my family, just look at my Zillow reviews. I said, I bring all that, but I expect commitment that I'm going to be your agent. And then I tell them the story, you know, about what happened to this woman with the manner of speaking uh, a lender. And I mean, I even had people say, well, tell me what the taxes are. And I said, well, you have an agent. You ask your, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to get into that. And they said, well, why not? I said, that's your agent's job. Yeah, well, it's your job to tell me. I said, no, no, because this is what happened. One time I told somebody, what the property taxes were and the special assessments what they covered. And their agent, again, had the nerve to call me and say, hey, Jeff, yeah, keep your nose out of my client's business. Don't tell them any information. That's my job to tell them. Just show them the house, let them look around. And then uh, he went off on me and I, da, 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 da. I said, I will never do it again. They said, well, my agent wouldn't do that. I said, well, I'm not, you know, I said a rule, I'm not gonna do it again. It wasn't true. It wasn't true. Nobody called me and told me that. But why should I have to? So I made that up, okay? But that was easy for me to get away with not having to tell them what the property taxes are. Let their agent do their job. Most agents don't even know what property taxes are, HOA, or what they cover. Any of that stuff. That's your job. That makes you guys look strong. So that brings us, uh, I think, pretty much to a conclusion. If you guys don't have any, if you have any questions um, about uh, getting prepared so leading up to the open house, one of the things that, that um, we teach in the classes is, um, aside from previewing properties, uh, look on the MLS and look up any anything that's on the market, mm -hmm. anything that's recently closed or an escrow, so that you're more educated on on what the prices are in the neighborhood. So when someone does say, oh, that's priced really high, really, there's three of them that just closed for the exact same price, you know, just last week or two weeks ago. Um, so like... Preparation-wise, what, what, what do you take with you aside from, from your notepad? Is there anything that you take with you no. in the open house? Do you... No, but that's an excellent question. And what I do when I show properties mm -hmm. to, to, my, to my buyers, okay, this is for open houses what I have here. And, and but I, I know, you know, if, if you're out there, if you're on the MLS, and I was on the MLS, even if I didn't have clients, I was on the MLS, uh, you know, three, four times a week, you know, for an hour or so, and maybe longer. And, and uh, it's, you know, you can only, only watch so much horse racing, you know, so I get on it, look on the MLS. And uh, speaking of horse racing, you know, Richard, you know, what he did, he was kind enough, he made up a category for me at the Wards Banquet for the most uh, conversions of people in open houses to buyers. And he gave me one of the wards with a crystal. And it was very nice of them. Uh, I just recently sold it on eBay. And, uh, and I didn't get that much for it, but I took that 50 bucks and I put it on the horse that won the Kentucky Derby. And that horse paid 40 bucks, so I did really well. Uh -huh. And uh, just teasing. Just teasing. Anyways, so, um, but I do like horse racing. But uh, anyways, uh, what I do, get back to Carlos's question. And as I, I, I put, the set of the comparables. What I do is if I'm showing properties to people, 
to answer how you do it. What I do is I go on and I do a uh, comparable. And then I send it. See, I, didn't, I, didn't, I never believe, at first I started doing the CMA. Well, CMA, all it does is just tell you the price of the property and it shows one picture, you know, and all these, it doesn't, it's not a deep dive as far as I'm concerned. So what I would do is I would go there and say it's one, two, three, four, uh, uh, Stonegate Avenue. And I said, now here's one just like this that that is interested comparable to yours. And it's how many square feet, how many bedrooms, how many uh, the lot square feet, price per square foot, the, the uh, upgrades that it has in the property, how long it's been on the market compared to what we're looking at right now. And then they can see the property and they can see all that stuff when you send it to them on an email from the MLS. And that's how I would handle that. Because you've got to be able, Carl's absolutely right, you've got to be able to show them comparables so they know that what they're looking at might be right too much or not enough. Well, what I was referring to is like when sometimes you have people that walk into the open house and then they look around and like, how much is it? Oh, you give them the price. They say, oh, wow, that's that's pretty expensive for this house. And then for you to have some evidence as to why it's this is priced correctly. Yeah. You know, this is actually priced below that, the recent sales. That probably makes sense. Yeah. Um, what I did is I would tell them, no, I didn't show them the information. I didn't want, I, I'm not, it's not my job again to be the information yeah. center. I know everything, you know, and I take my pride in it. I call myself an area expert. I always say that I'm an area expert. I'm the area expert. I am the area expert, okay? And MJ, you are the area expert, okay? You don't have to go home and say that into the mirror, you know, but um, <clears throat> when somebody would come in and they say price too high, no, it's not. You should see the comparables. They said, oh, really? I said, yeah. And if you're interested, I can get those for you. Well, that's for the next step because if they say, nah, that's all right, you know, to show it to them, all I did is give them free information. That's my, that's just everybody... Guys, you're going to take everything that I told you and you're going to take pieces of it or nothing of it or all of it and tweak it and put it into your own system and your own technique and your own personality. But for me to give that to you, I mean, you're really nice, you know, and you're friendly and, you, you know, you got a nice face, Vivian, but you know what? I'm not going to give you that information, but if you said to me, oh, I'd really like to see those comparable. Okay, cool. Why don't you give me your name and phone number and email address and we'll communicate and I'll get that for you. Okay. How early do you show up to the open house to get everything? Started? About 20 minutes early. 20 minutes? Yeah, at least 20 minutes. Because there's, a, You know what? I'm not going to mention one of the agents in the office. She had me put out. And I'm not in bad shape. And this was you know years ago. I was in good shape too. But she had me put out like 30 signs. <laughs> Give me a printout, 30 signs. By the time I got ready for the open house, I was ready to hit the locker room and take a shower. You know what I'm saying? I was afraid somebody would come in the open house and I'd be in the shower you know, with no clothes on to clean her down. But, uh, uh, well, not that bad, but I was really sweaty because it was a warm day. It's not my job to tell the agents, put the sign up. And I'll tell you something else. If you get an agent, and I heard there were some agents, and they would say, okay, if you get a buyer out of my property, I'm at 25% of it. No. No, I'm doing you a favor. You're not paying me any money to do it 100 bucks an hour or 200 bucks an hour. If I get a buyer for your property, as a matter of fact, it's okay to Michael's last name. Okay, so this guy, Michael, that used to work here, we became very good friends. He's an excellent agent. Why he's moved on between him and uh, and and uh, and uh, Richard, but he's uh, um, he was he's a cool guy, and he would never never ask me for a penny. And and um, he didn't. You know, you don't put up. You don't have to put up thirty signs for somebody. You know, like I said, you just put up a couple signs. But you want to get there early to get that set up. But you want to get there early. So you can walk that property and get to know everything and touch everything. Because I can probably guarantee it. When you do the open house Saturday, if you do it on Sunday, you're going to see more things about the property on Sunday that you didn't even realize Saturday that you walked around and said, did they just put that in? I didn't recognize it. I didn't remember that from yesterday. Yes. So get there early so you know. And I used to do, if you remember, open houses every weekend. My weekends were taken up. And he and I did most open houses. But then they walk around like... Um, just so you know, on his properties, I sold three of his properties that I did open houses on. Most of the time, I sold somebody else's property. But I'm going to tell an agent, if I'm going to do an open house for you and sell your house, why should I give you any of my commission or if I sell them something else? You know? I mean, one time I did one of his properties, and the people came, I gave my card, and the people came back, they're from Japan, came back the next day, and he did the open house on Sunday. 
and they gave him my card and said they wanted to talk to me. And he said, oh, I don't know, he got arrested or something like that, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know, it sounds like something he would say, you know, and he sold them the property. And that really kind of tweaked me, you know what I mean? And you know how he is, he's, got, he's a nice enough guy, but he's got larceny, you know, his blood like, you know, most people, but I'm not knocking him because, it, you know, karma, right? <laughs> because there was another time that he had, that I did an open house for him over in Stogate, and I did it like three or four weekends on this property. And the people, he was, he sold their property. <clears throat> he showed them some properties. And then he said, I'm going to give you these people. And the, uh, if, if they want to buy a new property, because that, Jeff, I'm going to be honest, that's all they want to do is buy a new property. But they want to see some, uh, some, uh, some pre-existing homes. And I said, okay, so if, so if you sell them a, a pre-existing, it's all yours. And, and he said, uh, and he said, I don't want anything. I said, of course, I wouldn't pay anything, <laughs> you know? And he says, but if they want a new home, you got to flip them back to me. I said, fair enough. And he's probably laughing, you know, you're going to waste your time. We went out and bought a home over in the Seal VA Hill in the Audubon. And at that time it was $900,000. And he goes, how'd you put them on a new house, on a, uh, on a pre-existing home? You know, on the right, right property. And you know what? I'd already previewed that property and I knew all about the property. So when they walked in, they felt at home because I already looked at it myself and they appreciate that you took that extra effort. But so to get back, um, you can tell how you're trying to but to get back to what you're saying, I don't give up that information right there, the comparables. If they want it, give me your info. And and because I've had enough people give me phone numbers or I've walked out and like I said, and they never contact me again. I walk out, I see my business card, you know, it was laying in bushes. You know, <laughs> I want to tell them, you know, like, you owe me for this business card. <laughs> and, and so what, and what happens now, like for open houses, when you uh, agree to hold an open house for an agent, sometimes they just will say, I'll put my signs up, you just show up to the open house. Or they'll say, hey, do you have your own signs? You can go ahead and put your own signs up because maybe it's an That's area they Julia farm. Did. Yeah, that was right. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's an area that they don't farm. If it's their farm area, they're going to want their signs. But if it's an area they don't farm, they're like, if you want to put your signs up, you go ahead and put them up. And why wouldn't you? You know, like Jeff said, he doesn't want to do that, but hell yeah, I would. And that's more exposure for me. You know, Carlos Rodriguez phone number, Polo Bank Platinum Properties. You know, that's it, yeah. They, that's, let me, they, they let me. Yeah, Julia was nice. So she let me put up uh, signs, so I brought uh, like six of my own signs yeah. and put them up by places that uh, were further away. You know, because the, the area is across from the hangar um, that was over there. Um, it was you just really needed directional stop sign. So yes, she let me put my own signs up. And she told me I could, so I brought them along. I put them up. I was going to mention that because ninety percent of the agents really don't want you to. I guess I don't know. Nobody no, nowadays they, they ask if you have your own signs, go ahead. Oh, Otherwise, that's cool. if you want to borrow my signs, you can borrow my signs yeah. and put them up. But a lot of them won't um, mm -hmm. volunteer to put the signs up for you. They'll say if you don't have signs, you can use mine. You mm -hmm. know, feel free. Um, so it's yeah. Uh, right. Another question is, uh, let's see, a uh, follow up. How do you how do you follow up after you you meet somebody in an open house and if, get, there, they they get if, if, if I get their name and phone number and email address then I contact her I send them an email I send them a text do you, is it like, like when you meet a girl you wait three days or like <laughs> it's been so long since, <laughs> since I met a girl and you know, like, yeah yeah or do you or do you seem eager if you call the next day yeah you know, when I was no when I was younger I would call. An hour later, <laughs> you know, it's it's night. yeah. So we want the girls or the, or the clients. No problem, Paul, for waiting when it, when it came to girls, but uh, it's, it's been so long. Um, and now, don't we have to get the name, phone number, email before they even? Yeah. You know, so, yeah. so yeah. So, yeah, so the list now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so like, how would you use the new the new uh, open house uh, sign this sheet? And, and if they're willing to so sign in. Because there's a lot of people that uh, say, "Nah, I'm not going to give anybody email address. I'll take your card and if I want to talk to you, I'll call them." I said, "Fine." He said, "Yeah, here's my card. If you do, I'm not going to push on you." You know, I'm, um, <coughs> pardon me. I'm the Gatorade on the car. I said, "I am the uh, um, the uh, area expert. I know the properties. Um, you I probably got clients you can speak to, and they'll tell you." And I said, uh, "But." Go ahead and contact me. If you got a list, which they have now, and they're willing, I would ask them, is it okay if I contact you and we stay in contact? They said, no, I don't want any contact. Then don't, because then you're doing solicitation that you're not supposed to. Okay? But you now, because I would not believe it, say, oh, I got a list and people got to sign in. 
okay, that's great for maybe for, for the listing agent to follow up, but they're not interested. They're just out kicking tires, looking at properties, and they just had lunch, and they need to walk them off <laughs> because, you know, they can't go to the gym now that they just had lunch, you know, <laughs> and a 24-hour? Yeah. Yeah. Which one do you go to? I work there. What do you? Fullerton and where? Okay. Yeah. I, for Polar, I used to go to the Foothill Ranch one all the time. Yeah, yeah the ranch. So anyways, um, I would... Uh, um, that when you get the name, I would uh, first email, then I would text, say, hey, gentlemen, it's Jeff Dreyer from uh, 1234 Stonegate. Uh, hope uh, you got the information you needed. I've got tons more. Um, if you need to look at Zillow, you know, it's tough when, at the beginning because you don't have the reviews. But, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I am the area expert and um, I will, I can negotiate and I have tons of experience negotiating, as I told you, and I will uh, protect your interests. You know, here's the story. This is this is a true story. I know I've been teasing with some things, and uh, I met a woman up in. Uh, I did meet a woman, you know, up in uh, up in uh, Fort Hill Hills, Wyoming. And I was walking by Australia Shepherds, and she was walking her little mutt. And um, and uh, she that's okay. I got purebreds. I call them mutts. <laughs> I'm a mutt. We're all mutts. Anyways, we were walking, and so we became friends. You know, there's no relationship there, but just friendship. And then what I did is I sponsored a blood drive up in my neighborhood uh, uh, twice a year for three years in a row, American Red Cross. And uh, didn't give me any business, but it was great for the American Red Cross. And uh, and it, it did give me business. But the way it got me business is I took one of my flyers and I realized the property had expired. And I went over and knocked on the door and the buyers were, were Chinese and they're, they're, from the, uh, they're from Shanghai. And we got along really good. They had me over like four or five times but I gave a flyer and said, hey, I'm having blood drive. And they gave me an opportunity to knock on the door. And then not only did I sell them a home, sell their home and sell them a home, we became very good friends. Anyways, um, uh, but she just recently had, this is a couple years ago, I say recently. So she bought, um, and I didn't know her then, she bought a townhouse up there. And it, mine's a hilltop community. And she noticed that they started getting, looked like the San Andreas fall, man. And, property the cracks there it was going up the wall she didn't know what was going on and there were several people and that side of the community was starting to fall off and i said so your agent <laughs> did you have anything did you have a natural hazard report that you signed that said anything about it uh uh uh, uh transfer disclosure statement sell the property questionnaire she said, i don't even know what you're talking about Jeff. she said i signed all the documents my agent told me sure enough i said just just email them to me she emailed to me they disclosed it and her agent missed it. And I said, well, that's what happens. Because one thing that Ted, did, Ted teaches, about 65% of the agents out there, I hope you never win them, they're really bad. They don't know what they're doing. And that's why you can get people to go with you, because they don't know. And and and, 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 and what I get with a lot of my Asian clients is my agent, yeah, she just said, buy, 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 just buy, just buy. She didn't tell me why I should buy it. She didn't say she would negotiate for me. So why do you negotiate for me? Why would you want to get the price thirty thousand dollars less? I said because if the property is a million five or a million four seventy on that thirty thousand dollars, I said, and I'm going to get two percent of that and split it with my office and end up putting another four hundred dollars in my pocket. Are you kidding? I'd rather save you thirty thousand dollars than make an extra four hundred dollars commission. They go, oh, that's nice. I like that. <clears throat> now you're working for them. So. Um, did I answer that question about follow-up? I would send them an email, I would send them a text, and then uh, and then I would even call, and leave a voice message. I have no problem make them. I'm old school. I get tired of texting. I like to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. Hi, MD. My name is Jeff from Caldwell Baker Platinum Properties. I was looking at your property online. I'd really like to go preview it if it's okay with you. I have some buyers who want to take a look at it. One thing is, you know, they're looking around, you know, 1.2 and you're 1.4. I said, uh, you know, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to take the wind out of their sales. Um, I know you can't tell me what your what your seller is selling property for, and I can't tell you what my buyers would pay. That's illegal. But would the entertainment offer around this ballpark if I could get them to move? Jeff, bring them over and let's take a look, and then I'll talk to my buyers and my, my sellers when I be able to do that. Cool. Now I know it's part of negotiating. But if you don't pick up the phone, you'll never know. You know. More questions. No, that was it. You pretty much covered everything that I had on here already. Okay, so now I'll put it. Yes. So is it common for like someone that 
wants you to do your open house to say, okay, if you sell the house, you get the commission and nothing. Is that pretty common? That that they get that. Like say Carlos had the listing and he says, I can't go this Saturday. Sonia, can you go and do an open house for me? So is it common for me to get, like if I get a buyer that I get all the commission? Yes. You should get all the commission. Any buyers that come through are yours. That's right. You shouldn't have to give, the, just because the listing agent had it, you're selling their property for them. I thought it was just for practice or just for you to get no. like new people that came out to look at the house that don't have an agent, then they might be potential. Yeah, well, it, it is good practice because most people you're not going to sell property to, but you're trying to, and you might not sell that one, but all the things that we've covered, that you might sell them something else. But I would never give, if I had an agent say, well, Jeff, if you sell it, you got to give them 25% of commission. I said, then find somebody else to do it. Because you know what? So, I'm sorry. I said, <laughs> pardon me, Sonia. Pardon me. And I said, uh, uh, I remember MJ here, uh, Jonathan here. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sonia. I apologize. Um, uh, if, uh, yeah, I tell them to give somebody else. My, my job is to try and sell your property, but anybody that I would get a client out of, a uh, prospective buyer, that's mine. And you should yes. you should clarify that before you bring it to the open house that the agents not that they don't have any expectations because there might be a case where the agent might say, Well, you had a buyer, hey, well, I want 25%. It's like you never said you wanted 25%. So you get that out of the way before you agree to it. That's right. That's right. And uh and uh but the fun, you know, you get you get more practice, get more exposure. You know, if you're sitting on the rear end, you know, and you sit on the couch and come on in and look around. A lot of times I don't I don't greet people in the door. Come on in, you know, I'm real casual. Come on in and have a seat. And I'm because I even if I'm doing nothing, I want to look like I'm doing something when they walk in. I don't want to jump up to your attention. And, you know what I'm gonna say? I come in and uh look around, be with you just a moment, and then I start making conversation with them. You know, and remember, uh buyers, people buy, you know, and ask questions. You know, I used to tell this to guys in the car business, you know, and there's you know, some of my sales where they, you know, they made good living, they made 150, 160 thousand dollars uh a year selling automobiles, you know, and they, and you know, it's, you know, you ask questions and then you ask questions and then you ask more questions. And a lot of times you ask questions, you'll ask a question, hopefully hoping that you're going to get the answer that you want, because when you get that answer, then you can reply to it. So you're a step ahead of it. That's all people's skills. And you get that from practice from being in open houses. Yeah. Uh, now I want to cover one other thing, but you had another question, Brian. I, yeah, I just want to ask a follow-up. So, you, I mean, obviously, I, I mean, I've, I've done a few open houses, very few. We're running out of time. Sorry. Okay. Just looking to see who's on. Nobody's on. Harriet. Oh, Harriet. Okay. Oh, Harriet. Hi, Harriet. <laughs> I've, I've had people write stuff down in such a scroll. You, you know that they've done it because they don't want you to contact them, so you just leave those yeah. alone. Okay. When you have contact details. And yeah, email, text, phone. How persistent would you be? I mean, if people kind of answer the phone and say, oh yeah, we're interested, but we'll get back to you. Do you think they're following you off? Do you do you call them again? It could, it could be. Because like I said, I've had people, uh, it's been a couple of years, and we won this last one. Um, and uh, this guy, Omar, he and I, we became really close. He's a cool kid. And uh, of course, everybody's a kid to me, you know, but, uh, yeah, and uh, they, uh, he, three years, almost three full years, he contacted me. And like I said, and I contacted him a few times. And, but I would, what I would do is I would contact somebody. And if we spoke, they said, oh, I'll get back with you and say, okay. Then I would probably wait a month, three weeks or a month. And I'd shoot him an email. Okay. And then I might wait a couple days, give him a chance to respond to it because people are slow about stuff. Me, I text, one thing you guys got to do. It's up to you. Like I said, you can take what I said or leave it. But if somebody texts you, you respond to it quickly. So if you don't get back to somebody for a couple hours, they think, well, guy, Sonia can't even get back with me. She's too damn busy. You know, what's it take to send a text? I sent one of my buddies a text. You know, they, you know, are you going to walk with me in the mud tomorrow, you know, on our eight-miler? And he doesn't get back with me for a couple hours. I said, okay, dude, if you don't want to go, don't go. But let me know because this is what time we're leaving. So, um, yeah, and then I would wait a couple, then I would wait, uh, um, they don't get back to you. I'd wait probably four or five days and I'd send them a text. I wouldn't call and then see if you get any reply. And then I'd do it maybe in another three weeks or a month. 
You know, there's an old sign, the old saying, until they buy or die. And if you skew the language, you burn them, piss them off, you had nothing to begin with. But if you call them every day, you really are going to bother them and burn them. You know, so you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to get to something important here. Um, I hope I answered those questions about preparing. MJ, anything? You sure? <laughs> Your head's saying no, but you look okay. Yeah, okay. All right. You damn? Do you take any water or cookies or <clears throat> any music no, or anything I, like that I, for the open house? I eat before I go there. Or, <laughs> oh, no. No, um, I don't. I don't. If the, if the listening agent wants to supplant, great. Uh, I do like music in there. And again, Michael used to put have a little ra uh, radio. So you have music. The only thing I couldn't stand is like when you put it on the TV and he's got this, he's have uh, like uh, opera, you know? I can listen to opera. I'd rather listen to opera than rap because, you know, maybe rap's an oxymoron, but it's not even music. But, you know, but uh, he puts that on there. And I got to, I call him and say, dude, I got to change this channel and I want to put it on something, some pop or some mainstream or something like that, you know, that people come in and it's kind of upbeat. You know, you listen to some Beethoven's overture, you know, and uh, so, um, all right, so listen, we know everything's changing. And it's and it's not going to be easy. Okay, it's not going to be easier because um, all the things that I told you, you could do up until August twelfth. In open house, starting the thirteenth, you can't. Okay, and as you've been tuning in to Richard, and and I I attend the meetings when Richard's uh, got information for us. Um, if you are listening. And he's got, and I like the redundancy that goes over and over and over again because that's how you're going to get it. Plus, well, it's, it's changed so much over the last month, month and a half. Yeah, yeah. Because they went from one thing to another to another. Yeah. And it's like every week there's like an update for it. Yeah. So, what we get done here, I'll tell you a conversation I had with a car attorney yesterday. <laughs> and I uh, pulled Richard. And because uh, um, I pulled a car from conversation. And, anyways, um, I want to know something, man. I pick up. I lost some buyers, unfortunately. They're still my clients, and we keep in contact. And they got a property in Woodbury, and they didn't buy over in Great Park because one of the party didn't want the uh, didn't want to live because the uh, veterans a cemetery was going in, and it wasn't bad juju for her religion. I understand because if somebody passed away in the property, I want to know because I want to tell that to the, any potential buyer. Do you have any you know, religious beliefs? Uh, anything? That more beliefs that you know that that would would keep you from purchasing a property that somebody passed away in, you know, and it was you know from like old, from old age or it was from medical issues. It's not like they, they you know it wasn't violent you know murder, but you got to tell them that because they're going to find out sometime from a neighbor and they're going to say, well, how come you didn't tell me, you should know that, and we don't want to live here if somebody died in the property. So get it out, and then you put it on a listing. I would put it on a listing too, just to let them know. You have any religious or you know some type of moral? You, know, you have to disclose if someone died in property. You're supposed to, but a lot of agents don't. Yeah, because it's on the TDS, right? Okay, so um, but so I asked Richard, and this is how I apologize to you guys and to the previous uh, new um, agents that Richard and Carl's been after me for at least a year to come in here and hold his books. <laughs> And I wish I could have done it when things were more like the wild rush, like they are now. You can talk to people, and you know, and and they were, you know, there's a plethora of, uh, you know, tons of homes on the market, all kinds of inventory, and you know, you can go out and preview. And um, but I went and I asked Richard a question, and it was about being able to engage, because you engage somebody and you come in, and like you, I might just want to have a conversation with you, even if you're not interested in buying a house. You know what I mean? And not as much to you or Sam, but maybe you and MJ. Okay, so. Um, but if you start talking about property and you don't have a BRE signed, $2,500 fine, okay? You, you're you're going to get fined for that. Uh, I got an email the other day and I asked Richard, maybe you have it, I think it came from NAR, and it showed the uh, infraction, the statute, and it showed 20, and it was like a six or seven of them that were $2,500 fines. Do you have that? I believe it's, it's if you show a property without having the, the, the agreement signed. It doesn't say if you're holding an open house, if they walk into the property. It's Richard, but Richard said that you cannot engage them on the property. Yeah. What you can do is if you get to BRE, if you get to BRE, you can they can come in, you can talk to them about it, but you need to tell them everything I'm telling you, 
is from the seller's perspective because I'm their agent, okay? Because I've been in properties and I even did properties for the seller agent. And I got to tell them, I said, man, did you see? They've got a water spot on the ceiling. And what they have leaked where it was from the shower and bathroom. He said, I don't know, I never noticed it. I said, I noticed it. So I knew his property, like I took I this Korean woman that I met, she came in, that she was listening. I was telling her, I never noticed that. I would have never seen that. And I said, I, don't, why don't, I, I hate to, uh, you know, knock your property, but I had to show that I had to show these people there's a water spot. That's my job to protect you. I know more, I've seen more properties, you know, and then people say, Wow, I love that, and I need you to be my guy. But what happens, I said, so now if I engage people to start telling about the property, even with the BRE, um, now that I get fined. So what I'm gonna do, you gotta do whatever you want. Uh you listen, Harry. Uh what I'm yeah. gonna do. <laughs> I'm what, here. What I'm gonna do is when you come in, I'm gonna say hi. Uh, I'm Jake, my name is Jeff. Um, I'm doing the open house. Uh, you can the, this is Sonya's property out here, but I know all about it and um, probably more than she does. And I'm old over it, but I can't tell you anything because there's a new law just passed and you may have heard about it. And if you didn't, uh, here's a player about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is a flyer about property, but the, but the commissions and our, they want the buyers to pay for it and pay commissions. Um, I said, I wouldn't worry about that yet until you find the agent, you find agents that can negotiate, but I can't tell you anything about the property. And all the things that I can't tell you now are things like what I used to be able to tell you. How long the property's been on the market? What it sold for originally? What they're asking for now? How much, per, how many square feet? How much price per square feet compared to other properties? What the upgrades are? How big the lot is? The HOA, how much the HOA, what the HOA covers? The special assessments like the Mellon Roost, what they cover, when they expire, uh, what the comparables are around the neighborhood. I could tell you that anything's wrong with the product. I used to be able to tell you all that stuff in open house, but I can't anymore on this property because that's the new law. <laughs> well, how do I find those things out? Well, if you'd like to sign a look around, and if you want to sign a buyer's representation agreement exclusive with me for this property or for a couple months for some other properties, you'll never regret it. You could tell me all that stuff, but you can't. That's the new law. I didn't make the law. I like it. Yeah, I like it. These are all the things that I can tell you, but I can't. Exactly right. And you'll get just you get a fair amount of people say ask, <laughs> but can I get your card? Mm -hmm. And then they'll call and say, you know what, Sam, I like what you said about that, and I'd like to know if, if, are there any new properties that you can take me and show me. Well, now that we have this, if we get a buyer's representation agreement exclusive, because if it was just about that property, okay, then, and I represent you, then I can represent you as the buyer. And, um, but if I show you other properties, yeah, I can tell you everything about it. I mean, I mean, I got a trained eye. I've been doing this, you know, even if you're new, you know, I've, I've been trained to do this. I've taken classes, you know, I passed an exam, you know, I could be, you know, I could be a brain surgeon. <laughs> But I chose to be a realtor, you know? Rocket surgeon. I don't know. Rocket surgeon? Rocket scientist. Rocket scientist, okay. Yeah, something that a lot of the agents, I think, still don't understand is, is how important it is to know the contracts in different forms and, and how to fill them out because you're, you're helping people with their biggest investment, possibly of their, of their lifetime. Million-dollar property, two-million-dollar property. So you're acting as almost like an attorney with all these documents and contracts and everything so it's important that you guys know this stuff a lot of people a lot of agents dismiss it they're like oh i i just want to know how to sell only and not this is part of your job marketing selling uh contracts all of this stuff is part of what you do this is your business it's, it's mind-blowing it's right? important that you know this stuff because again you're acting almost as an attorney for them for the biggest purchase of their of their lifetime yeah i, I think i mentioned in a, in a previous training that in the uk um, all of the stuff is done oh, by so attorneys. You can see for like Georgia, Oklahoma. Yeah, no, just slightly east of there. All right. Um, yeah, it's all done by by lawyers. I mean, the, yeah, the, yeah. The real estate agents don't touch any of this. A lot of that back east. So, I feel like yeah, I didn't realize it was going to be so much. Yes, but I don't know if I would say an attorney because then first thing people think of, you know, there's so much tort 
you know, they, they think lawsuit, you know, I say I'm your representation. My job is, and honestly, what we're, what, what he's saying is- I'm just saying to the agents in general, not not to tell your clients this, but you're acting as-, as you're, well, He's right, he's right, you are. You are being like, what he says is 100% true. And you should know the documents. And what you should do is like, when I get a property inspection report, okay, my buyers, I don't just send it to them. No, I read it over. And then I read it over again. And then because two times is not enough, I read it over a third time and I take notes because that way you're gonna tell you're gonna tell your buyers you haven't sold anything yet. You think all the documents are blowing your mind. Everything's a negotiation, man. Everything you negotiate on the price of the home, unless your seller's got too much money and just want it. Okay, you negotiate on requests for repairs. Okay, and then on requests for repairs. So you gotta pick and choose your battles. I tell people, listen, it's not stop over step over dollar to pick up pennies. You know, so you don't like the color of the wall. You know, you can paint the wall, but you know what? This needs to be done over here, and you know, and we need to get this done. I sold a property. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe I closed with this. It's been a long a meeting. I apologize. Um, I thought I'd talk for ten minutes and be done. And <laughs> you know what? No, you just. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did a property over in Stonegate. And are you guys anybody familiar with Stonegate? I don't, I don't know where it is. Okay, well, I don't know if you're familiar with the neighborhood, but there's a street, and it's a, right across from the pool, the rec center, and they have basketball courts, and the street is ovation. And I did an open house. I did it uh, for three or four weekends in a row, every Saturday and Sunday. And on one weekend, guys, on one weekend, uh, an Indian family came in, husband and wife, and their daughter, who was, at that time was probably 30, and uh, we got along really, really well. And then a couple hours later, this other Indian couple came in and with their little kids, and we got all really, really well. And then just as I was closing out, the first family called me and they were looking at new homes over here. And could I come over there and represent them and read their contract and be their agent for them? They said, yeah, Do I have an agent? I said, Oh, yeah, we have an agent, Jeff Dreyer, because we've got your car. Anyways, she didn't buy the new home, but I sold. The parents, a property in in uh, in um, in Portfolio Springs, across from the elementary, okay, over by Pathway over there on, on Latitude, and I sold the daughter because she, yeah, she was single, but she, you know, she was independent. She had much money, you know, and uh, and she had a good job, excellent credit. I sold her Michael's property, went over in Stonegate, so I sold two. And then the other family that came in, I sold them a property as well over in Portola Springs. One day, I met two families sold three properties out. So, you know, it's not just that, but you gotta have all the documents, read all the documents, read the, the transfer disclosure statement, sell a property questionnaire, everything he teaches you, absorb it. And what I've been doing, I got nothing working. I've been getting, I've been recently going on the MLS, that's why I was asking these questions. I read that wrong on the listing agreement. But looking at that and the new RPA, and I want to read them and be versed in them. You know, I want to know when, you know, if I don't have one thing I would like about this office, hey, Richard, uh, you got a question, he'll answer it for me. You know, I don't know why all the agents don't come over here because I know that there's other offices that the agents don't get involved, the, the brokers. You know, you're kind of on your own. Here, Carlos, he'll answer it for you. He knows. And if I don't know the answer, I'm going to ask you, Rich. I'm never going to give you the wrong answer and just pretend like it's the right answer. I'll tell you, I'm not sure. Let me let me answer it. Yeah. So, and, and you know what? I, I lost, and I lost some buyers that would be an offer on one property. Someone after they would take it, and then a month later they decided they want to take it. But the buyers got mad at me because we went and we looked at property. I was talking about flooring, and usually 99% of the time, if I don't know something, I never answer a question that I don't know. If I don't know. I said I don't know. Let me find out for you. And so. We we're talking about flooring, and they had uh, uh, a laminate flooring. They had transition, and then they had tile flooring. And the, and the buyer says to me, "Is there, you know, any difference? Do you think in the cost between the tile and the, and the laminate?" And I said, "All right, wood." I said, "No, I don't think so." I said, no. "I said, no, it's not like it's engineered wood. It's laminate, probably comparable in price." Well, he got so mad at me when he, a couple days later he said I lied to him. I said, "About what?" And he says, because it costs, a, it costs a lot more to lay the tile. 
I said, what should I call my flooring guy? You know, I have a list of, of flooring guys, uh, counter guys, roofer, HVAC guys, electricians. I want to have some people I can use, uh, I, uh, an inspector, all that stuff. I keep it and I give those to, and I use them and they're all good people. Um, and most of them I've gotten through other people in this office. But I asked my flooring guy, he says, yeah, it costs more. I said, how can tile cost more than, than the laminate? He says, not, the reason it's more because the labor, it's more labor intensive. He says, the other th stuff snaps together. This, you got to get all the grout. You got to get everything right. Gotcha, I didn't realize that. So I called it the buyer. And honestly, I lost a buyer over that. Something that silly. I apologized up and down and I lost a buyer and I felt really bad about it. <laughs> Mostly because I lost the commission. You know, <laughs> but the guy was, you know, Richard had, you know, Richard got involved. So anyways, um, so I picked this up like I'm done. Because you picked your stuff up like you're done. So I picked my stuff up. Like I'm done. <laughs> okay, so it's been way too long uh, that taking the time. Any questions? You guys are still awake. That's positive. Thank you. Yeah. Did you learn anything? Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Oh, you're the expert. Thank you. Sure. Nice you want to buy a piece of uh, crystal that's top <laughs> I got it. All right. right. I've got one quick thing for you, which is nothing to do with risk. Sure. Um, you said How you, you're into horse racing. 